first stop will be PHP News, second will be uh, by Aru, and the third one will be uh, by Wen Yan. So I'll start it off. So PHP News is not really a top per se. We are trying to add this uh, regular segment in our PHP meetup. So a show of hands, how many of you actually read the PHP change log regularly? Nobody, right? I also. Okay, so, uh, so it's a good way for us to keep in touch at what are the changes, newest changes to PHP and uh, among other news. So this is the first week of July. We will just uh, touch on what happened in June. So in June, PHP 7.3.0 Alpha 1 and 2 were released. Now, Alpha 1 and 2 is not really for production. It's just for you to test out to see uh, what things. Uh, let's see what are the new features that are available in PHP 7.3. Uh, quite a lot of to share what are the better incompatible changes, new features, blah, 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 change functions. There's quite a lot. I'm not going to go through all of them. I will just uh, highlight a few interesting ones. Okay, first one. <coughs> now, how many of you know what is here dot and now dot? Okay, very good. Now let me show an example. So normally you want to store a big bulk, a big chunk of text in a variable. So instead of doing this, uh, okay. So one way is to actually use a use uh, this special triple arrow and then you put a tag. It can be anything, it can be full bar, it can be bars, but most importantly is the last line must be flushed all the way to the left with a semicolon. So if this is food, this must be food as well. Okay, and you can put all kinds of text, all kinds of uh, text inside. This one is called here dot. So it's uh, it will take in variable substitution. So if I do this, uh, okay, you substitute the variable. The other one is called now dot. Over here, everything is a literal. So there will be no subs there will be no variable substitution over here. It will be outputted. It will be stored as it is. So what are the changes in the PHP 7.3 regarding this? Now remember I say that for this here, that here dot and now dot, the ending tag must always be flushed all the, way, all the way to the left, no indentation. So in PHP 7.3, <coughs> there's a new feature. They allow you to indent, put uh, space in front of the ending tag. So if you were to have a, this tag like this, in PHP 7.2, and before there will be no error, but in PHP 7.3 this will give to the error because you say, oh, you have an ending tag here, you have an ending tag here, so that's an interpretation error. Okay, now I will talk more about this later. Another backwards incompatible change for PHP 7.3, MySQL. So now prepare statements, they will properly report the fractional seconds for date time, time, and time time columns. Previously, no, you just give it zero, no fractional seconds. So, depending on how you actually <coughs> pass your prepared statements or receive the result, uh, you might need to check for backwards or uh, inco incompatible changes. Now, next, we have new features. Let's see, uh, ah, here, new features. So the new features, this is the one that led to the backward incompatible change earlier on. So now they allow indentation for the ending tag. So previously, your ending tag must always be like this. So if you're a big anal about indentation like me, like, wow, this one looks a bit very off. I, I cannot take it. I got OCD. So now they allow you to do this. Oh, okay, wow, now it looks nicer. Now oh, my indentation looks nicer. And they allow you to skip the semicolon as well. Wow, okay? So this is, oh, looks That's much better. Easy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now. But does it also preserve uh, the spacing? Uh, no, so actually what 
uh, if I read it correctly, what will happen is uh, when they see, they will actually strip each line. Okay. They'll, they'll strip all the white space from each line. So basically, it will, to the compiler or to the interpreter, you will basically look like this. So the, the spacing between, uh, in line 5, like, will it go Line 5, yes. Line 5, the indentation will be preserved. Okay. So if there's 10, if there's 8 spaces in front of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, in your text, when you output it on the website or a file, right, the eight spaces are preserved. Are preserved. <laughs> yeah, so some people like to do this. So uh, it really depends, but if you are using it for a web page to output on the HTML, right, so white space is irrelevant. It doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> okay, now another one. Uh, a new compile error exception has been added. <coughs> so for PHP 7, um, last time in PHP 5, 5.6 and below and earlier, we had our exceptions. But certain things like uh, if there's a compile error, there's a, there's a syntax error, or there's a division by error, uh, or there's a fatal error, we cannot catch it. But PHP 7 introduced throwables. So uh, instead of uh, catching Exception only, you can also catch error and the parent class for error exception is actually throwable. So basically last time what we were deemed as fatal error, uncatchable fatal errors in PHP 5.6 and earlier can now be caught. So it's under throwable or error. So in PHP 7.3 7 they are adding a new compile error exception. So this one only affects compilation errors that may be thrown when they are tokenizing the for the extract syntax t uh, tree. Okay, let me skip quite a lot. Uh, how about change functions? Okay, for JSON, a new flag has been added. Now, previously, whenever you run JSON encode or JSON decode, especially JSON decode, you get a piece of JSON JSON string, you decode it but you don't know whether there's an error. You need to call, you need to call JSON last error to retrieve the error message. Say, so or probably missing semicolon or missing uh, braces, things like that. But now you can specify that if there's an error during JSON decode or JSON encode, throw an exception. So it allows you to catch it. So miss for cleaner code. So last time, uh, so you don't need to call this, make an additional call to this to retrieve the error message. You can just pass this flag into JSON encode or JSON decode. So they will throw a JSON exception if there is an error. Now this is of PHP 7.3. Huh? Let me see, uh, how about new stuff? New stuff that is, uh, is countable function. Eh, yeah. Good question. Uh, uh, so basically in PHP 7.2 and before, right, if you want to count, you want, if you want to check whether this array is iterable or countable, whether you can count the number of things inside, for, you need to do a double check. Check whether it's an array and check or check whether it's a countable. Okay, so the proposal for this RFC is basically replace this whole thing with this function call. So it's just a more like convenience method. Okay, it's more like convenience method. Now, let's go on. So this for PHP 7.3 new features. On the 21st of June, PHP 7.2.7 was released. So uh, basically, it's a bunch of change logs. Okay, let us just go through one of these. Okay, now when you submit bug reports or any vulnerabilities, right, people are not going to be bothered with you because everyone is busy. So normally they will require that you send an exploit or you send a proof of concept to prove that, oh, uh, this is the code 
that will generate this error before they will actually file the bug report or show uh, this I show on it. So this person, uh, Gardelet, uh, he actually came up with the thing where if your document root contains a non ASCII character, so for example like this, okay, if your document root contains a no ASCII character, you will not be able to read any files inside the folder. Okay, so this is the, he give an example, this is a final document root where the web page is being served from. Previously, it was this folder. And he had a text file called test.text. Inside it just say hello world. So when he call, when he runs the PHP CLI server from uh, from this directory, he can actually read the text file. But when he moves his document root to here, he find that he cannot read the text file anymore. You say test.txt, no such file or directory. Okay, so somehow the non ASCII character caused a problem in passing the document root. So PHP 7.2.7 and PHP 7.1.18 faces this problem. Now, next one. Uh, around the same time, PHP 7.1.19 was released. Same thing, the change line is over here. Where is it? Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh. Okay, this is one of the bugs. Okay, this is a similar type of error, same thing with the, uh, it's by the same person. Yeah, got the So if, uh, if there's a file that has a alias or sim link, and um, and there's a non ASCII character in the path. Same thing, you see, bad file descriptor in command line. He, it is unable to find the file if there's a non ASCII character in the path. So these are the two main fixes in uh, PHP 7.2.7 and 7.1.19. Now, the other part about PHP which a lot of people like to complain about is uh, PHP open source, right? So there's always a lot of vulnerabilities, right? So under this PHP news statement, I'm going to share about CVE, Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. So if you go to this website, uh, there's a list of uh, vulnerabilities. It's not just PHP. You can, uh, let me see here. Uh, yeah. So let's say I want to talk about uh, okay, let's say uh, Swift iOS, let's say, for example. Okay, they will tell you what are the recent vulnerabilities all the way until 2016 or even 1999, right? What are the vulnerabilities that's been reported? Okay, whether it's patched is another issue. So if you're keying PHP, you will see another bunch. So if it's programmed by humans, Humans can hack it. Humans can find loopholes. So it doesn't matter which programming language you are using. So today, under PHP News, I'm going to share about two. First one is CV9857. Okay, what is the description? PHP script small. This is a very nice website where you can buy PHP scripts. You are too lazy to write your own PHP script, never mind. You can buy a script from there. I'll show you how much it is later. Huh? So it has SSS uh, cross script vulnerability. So it's basically when you cross cross site, uh, cross site scripting, uh, cross site scripting. So basically, when you get user input, you should always sanitize it. When you output anything to the user, you should always uh, so, yeah, sanitize it also, filter it, make sure that it's safe for the user to view. So cut out things like JavaScript, uh, uh, unsafe JavaScript. So I'll, I'll just uh, go through this. Um, 
let's go to the website now this vulnerability is blocked by Chrome Chrome will just say there's a SSS exploit so it blocks it from being executed uh, Safari doesn't seem to work so so uh, right now I try on Microsoft Edge and Firefox they are still vulnerable okay this is PHP script small this is a script you want to run a matchmaking website right okay but you're too lazy to code your own right then you can buy this script for four hundred dollars okay if you're too lazy to write your own okay if you were to go to the user demo of course they will let you try it out first before you actually buy right so you come to this website wow very nice okay if you click on the search okay you come to here so you can search by profile id so we'll try view search by id uh, which will bring you to here now this is a search field i've typed out this text this is a javascript code when i click search this one comes up you shouldn't huh? so if uh, i decided to write some malicious code to actually steal your cookie right that's it okay so now you decide whether this uh, 400 dollars is worth it and if you look at the if you look at the cv website let me see here if i can find it uh, and you search under P php You will find that there are many of these around. I have 71 matches just on this page, first page alone. Okay, so this website definitely um, you won't want to buy your PHP script from there to, uh, to code it. Okay, now the next one uh let's research so what happened was uh i took um i took a module back at nus uh, school of computing last august uh it's under this uh, lifelong learning initiative for nus alumni so alumni can take up the two modules for free so i took one on software security this was my assignment so it's uh that's why it's a bit more detailed so i'm going to show a demo first uh how many of you know what is php mailer yeah, so basically it's a library used in some frameworks used just to handle sending of mail. Okay, let me see. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, CS4239, that's the module name. Uh, so first we were told, the lecturer gave us a list of CVs, choose the one that you want to work on. So of course I choose PHP, right? Uh, so first thing we need to do a demo to the lecturer, show that we can actually exploit it. So this is the web page that I came up with. Now, supposing this is a form, a very simple contact form, if you were to key in this, and key in the detail, everything will be okay. And there's a footer. Now, uh, let me see here. Okay, the files are being served from here. There is a file called footer.php. Okay, look carefully. These are the, this is the contents of footer.php. So my website, this page actually includes that footer.php here at the bottom. If I were to submit a query, fine, my mail is sent. Everything is okay my footer is still the same. Now, if I were to demonstrate the vulnerable behavior, okay, I'll explain, I'll, I'll explain this later. Now, uh, the sender email, I put in some funny codes, I put in some funny parameters, right? Now, in case you're wondering that, uh, yes, quotation marks is allowed, it's an allowed character for email addresses, it's allowed, huh? spaces are allowed in email addresses as well, just as some websites, they don't allow it. Okay, so this is a valid email. Okay, so send it to a recipient and there's a message. In the message, you notice that I actually have a code. I'm not sure if you can see it. Basically, I'll just output PHP info. 
Now, look at this footer. It's okay. This is a footer. When I submit a query, fail to send me up because something went wrong. Never mind. I'll just go back to the page again. Now we look at the footer. Okay, let's go back to the terminal. And I'll just show the contents of footer.php again. Okay, so my footer.php has been modified. And let's look at the permissions of this footer.php. It belongs to the Apache uh, WW data uh, user, and it's only writable by the Apache command. So I'm not saying that oh, this PHP file is worldwide, world, uh, uh, world writable. No, the permissions are all correct. Okay, but yet, okay, this PHP Miller library actually uh, exposed a vulnerability. So, uh, so what was the problem? Okay, let me show a few websites. Okay, under PHP Miller 7.2.18, so there's this part where you are actually validate the address. Under the validate address, uh, there's this part where if you have a uh, quotation marks, it breaks, you just return true. It doesn't cater. I'm not going to go through this regular expression. Okay, <laughs> this is too much already. Okay, and what happens is you will actually call send mail in Linux, in Ubuntu. So you're passing some parameters. Okay, so the validation does not cover the use case where there's quotation marks. Okay, you assume that the user is always a good person. Okay, so this allows additional parameters to be injected in the sender address. So for example, I can put open quotation mark, attacker, I escape a quotation mark, then I put in some parameters. So in the demo just now, this is what happened. These are the parameters sent to the send mail command in Linux. These are the actual parameters being sent. So send mail, the first argument will be this, which is the actual binary. This will become the second parameter. This becomes the third parameter, which is set a Q group. This one minus capital as is log file. So any errors with this, when you send a mail, any errors will be logged to this log file. Okay. So now I set the log file to footer.php. And the sender, this causes a crash because it's an invalid option. Because of this, so the whole thing crashes. So that just now it's all invalid. There's a mail sending mail error sending mail, right? So where will the error information be locked to? It will be locked to this file. Okay, if I want, probably I can even create another file. And where was the patch? So this is the patch. Previously, how do I set the parameters? I just use a sprintf. Now, for the patch, they put an escape shell argument. So they will escape any shell arguments. So play safe, lah. Play safe, right? So let me show the demo. Uh, here. Okay, baseline behavior, same thing. Okay, wait, lah. Let me reset. Okay, footer is normal. If I use back the same vulnerable behavior, these are the same parameters just now. The sender email with the additional command line parameters, and you will still output PHP info. When I submit query, this time around there's no error. So everything is okay, right? Very fine, right? The problem is uh, there was a bypass. The patch was incomplete. Just running escape shell argument wasn't enough. So let me show you the bypass. Now, the error was 5.2.17 and earlier. 
the patch was in 5.2.18 okay now this is using php library mirror library 5.2.18 now it looks exactly the same take note of this escape single code escape single code huh? okay so the rest is the same the recipient subject and the message is exactly the same so this is actually exactly the same as the previous exploit I said that now there's a escape single code so if I were to sum, uh, submit a query pom fear to send mail and now let's look at this same problem so sometimes uh, it may take a few rounds for some for vulnerability to be fully patched so we must always try to keep our libraries up to date so let's um, okay the patch first just now before the patch we got all the, this email address was basically broken up to all this now with the patch the email will be properly passed in as the sender email so this whole thing is the sender email which is valid how about the bypass the bypass was patched was fixed in php mailer 5.2.20 and how did they patch it okay they added another one is shall uh, save so let me see uh. okay so besides escape shell command you actually run some other characters okay whether another bypass will happen next time i don't know so this was my assignment so basically for today okay that's the php news for now and now i'm going to pass the time to uh, our first speaker our first actual speaker aro for this uh, talk